I made some videos this month, around 30 in total, so if you missed any, here they are. Markiplier was supposed to play this character in the FNAF movie. Now, as many of us should know, Markiplier was supposed to be in the FNAF movie, but due to scheduling conflicts, he couldn't make it. And in this recent Game Theory video, MatPat talked about his experience on set of the FNAF movie, and told us what role Markiplier was supposed to play. And I'm kinda glad he didn't play in the movie because this role doesn't make sense for who he is. MatPat explained in the video that Markiplier was originally supposed to play the security guard in the beginning of the movie, but I don't understand why they would kill the king of FNAF. But if you want Markiplier to be in the next FNAF movie, make sure to subscribe. But anyways, Sparky the dog doesn't make sense in the FNAF movie. Now in multiple scenes in the movie, we can see Sparky the dog in the back room of Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. But why would he be there when there is a diner that MatPat worked in specifically called Sparky's? Now I have an absolutely absurd theory why Sparky the dog is at Freddy Fazbear's instead of Sparky's diner. So hold on tight. I think when Fredbear's diner was around, Sparky's diner was also existing. And the two restaurants were in competition with each other. And with Sparky's diner possibly being more popular than Freddy Fazbear's, William Afton decided to sabotage the restaurant and steal their main animatronic, Sparky the dog. Because as you can see in the movie, Sparky's diner is a very small diner and isn't as big as a normal pizzeria would be. So I think William Afton purposely stole Sparky the dog and dismantled him so he could have more customers go to Freddy Fazbear's. But anyways, all FNAF movie animatronics. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, Golden Freddy, Cupcake, Spring Bonnie, Balloon Boy, Sparky the dog, Ella, Shadow Freddy for some reason, Withered Foxy, and then I'm forgetting one. Actually, I'm forgetting two. You cannot forget Endo 01. And I guess we kind of do see Spring Trap at the end of the movie, so I guess that is all the animatronics we see in the brand new FNAF movie. But anyways, no, not this balloon boy, this balloon boy. So where is he in Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria? Now something tells me that he was actually never there, and he wasn't part of any of the animatronics that were hidden in the back room, and that he was actually dismantled and thrown away, and I'll tell you why if you subscribe. Now in this scene where Max goes to see Freddy, if you brighten it up, you can actually see what looks like to be a withered foxy head in the room, which means that the FNAF 2 Pizzeria location did exist in this universe, which would mean every single FNAF 2 animatronic is canon, which we can obviously see because Balloon Boy is in the movie. But why wouldn't the toy animatronics or him be in the back room as well? And well, let's look at FNAF 3. In FNAF 3, we can see this box in your office that has a bunch of toy animatronic parts, including Balloon Boy. So I feel like before they shut down the FNAF 2 Pizzeria location, they just threw away all the toy animatronics, including Balloon Boy. So that brings me to ask the question, where is Balloon Boy in the FNAF movie? Shadow Freddy could have saved William Afton's life in the FNAF movie. In the FNAF movie, we can see very quick scenes where Shadow Freddy is shown, like in the promotional security footage and in the back room. But Shadow Freddy could have saved William Afton's life if it weren't for this. So before I get into this crazy theory, make sure to subscribe if you love Finance at Freddy's. In the FNAF 3 minigames, we can see William Afton wearing the Shadow Freddy suit to lure the animatronics outside the safe room so he can destroy them and dismantle them permanently. And even though we don't know why he does this, we can assume that he does it because he's paranoid of the animatronics attacking him. So maybe if William Afton tried to do the same trick in the FNAF movie, he could have destroyed and dismantled all of them, preventing his death. Or maybe not, I don't know, in FNAF 3, the ghost kids came back and got him spring block, so I don't know. But that's why Mike Schmidt in the FNAF movie might actually be William Afton's son. Now yeah, put on your tinfoil hats for this one, because this theory might be the most crazy thing I've ever made. Now in this scene right here, while William Afton is basically giving an interview to Mike Schmidt, he goes to read out his name, and it has to stutter. And a lot of people think that is because he realizes that Garrett, which is Mike's brother, was one of the children that he killed. And I don't disagree with that, and I actually do think that's the case, but I think there's a couple deeper layers to this whole story than we know. As we can see in the flashback scenes, obviously this is Mike's dad and Mike's mom, and it's even what the casting for the characters say. But what if I told you that this isn't Mike's real dad, but instead his stepdad? And during Garrett's kidnapping, Mike had to have been old enough to realize what was going on, which is why he has non-stop nightmares about the event, because he knew he could have prevented what happened, which would make him way older than his little brother, which could totally leave the possibility that Mike's mom got remarried to Mike's stepdad and had another child. And with Mike's stepdad taking over the father role in his life, he was estranged from his real father, which happened to be William Afton. And maybe the real reason Mike's mom hid his true father from him is because she knew about the despicable things William has done. So if you want me to continue this theory and make a part two, make sure to subscribe. The puppet was in the FNAF movie the whole time and we just didn't realize it. Or well, that's what some people are saying online. You guys might have seen these images appear online recently. One looks to be a normal image until you look closer into the kitchen area and you can see the puppet head. And this image right here. While Mike is looking on the stage while all the animatronics are deactivated, if you brighten the image, you can actually see what looks like to be two eyes very similar to the puppets. So was the puppet in the FNAF movie this whole time? Well, unfortunately, no, he wasn't. And well, let me explain. This image with the puppet in the kitchen is so clearly photoshopped and I do not understand how people even believe this. You can clearly tell that it's just this render from the FNAF 2 game just kind of copy and pasted with the opacity down. But on the other hand, this image, yeah,
yes, this image is not Photoshop. But does that mean this is the puppet? Well, I don't think so. This could just be light reflecting off of something or maybe even an endoskeleton hidden behind stage. But anyways, FNAF Plus was just released, not the real one, a fake remake, and it added multiple new features into the game, such as camera jump scares, which wasn't in the original FNAF game. So I'm speedrunning all of the FNAF 1 jump scares, which is easier said than done because I need good RNG that will allow me to get jump scared quickly and hopefully won't be getting jump scared by the same animatronic multiple times. And after hundreds of attempts, this happened. Firstly, I got the easiest jump scare out of all of them, Golden Freddy, by doing the 1987 Easter egg on the custom night menu. But that's not the only jump scare that's easiest to get. Next, I did Freddy's power out of jump scare by camping with the two doors closed and the lights on. After that, I moved on to the last four jump scares and I decided to get the next easiest jump scare by camping with my right door closed and doing nothing. Boom, Foxy's done. Then I moved on to the last three, which came very easily because all I did was keep my left door closed and open my camera multiple times, allowing Freddy and Chica to jump scare me simultaneously. Then after that was Bonnie, let's go! Why is Foxy withered in FNAF 1? When you think of withered animatronics, you probably think of Toilet Bonnie, withered Freddy, and of course, withered Foxy. But Foxy wasn't always originally gonna be withered in FNAF 1. Way back in 2014, Scott was developing FNAF 1 and was in the process of making the animatronics. And while he was developing the animatronics, he developed the first three, Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica, which for some reason, Freddy was originally gonna be a beaver, but anyways. But when he was making the fourth animatronic, that turned out to be Foxy. While Scott was developing Foxy, he was on a bumpy six hour car ride, which caused Scott to make mistakes on the character model. And by the time he got back from his trip, Foxy was finished, but he looked all beat up and withered. New game, guess the FNAF sound. We'll start off easy. So what sound is this? Good job, it's the FNAF 1 door sound. So now let's get a little bit harder. What sound is this? Yes, that was the FNAF 6 printer noise. But what sound is this? It's the background noise that plays during the rare screens in FNAF 2. Okay, the next one is really hard, so here it is. That is the FNAF 2 puppet laugh noise from the FNAF 2 cutscenes. And now onto the last one. So if you get this one, you're an OG FNAF fan and you have to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. But anyways, here it is. Fruit Punch for everyone. What's the most secret animatronic in FNAF history? Way back in 2019, Steel Wool released the very popular and terrifying FNAF Help Wanted. And in the game, it includes multiple animatronics from almost every single FNAF game from before FNAF Help Wanted. Which was the first time we got to see many FNAF animatronics make a comeback all in the same game. Months later, players started to report a mysterious sighting from within one of the levels. You might have looked at the animatronics and thought to yourself, these look amazing. But Steel Wool left in a supposedly unfinished glitch model of one of the FNAF fandom's favorite animatronics, Bonnie. Before people officially found out this was a glitch or an easter egg, people decided to call this hidden FNAF animatronic Ethan Bonnie, and it was only able to be seen in the hidden area in one of the FNAF Dark Rooms levels. William Afton always comes back, but why does he? Well, it might be because he is a genius, a master of manipulation, capable of using insane physical strength, very skilled at murdering and body disposal, a master at self and hiding in plain sight, a master of disguise, an engineering genius, a pharmaceutical expert, an extremely knowledgeable businessman, and a force of sheer willpower. But even after Willem's death due to being springlocked, how strong is he then? Well, he has near immortality, enhanced their ability, possible hallucinant inducement, extreme bloodlust, bionic body parts, and undead zombie-like abilities. But that doesn't answer the question why. Foxy is one of FNAF's most popular characters, and one of the reasons why is because his very unique jump scares in the FNAF games. In FNAF 1, he is the only animatronic you can visibly see moving towards your office before he jump scares you. But why is he the only animatronic to run to jump scare you in the FNAF series? Well, there's actually a reason why he does that. Now, many FNAF fans say that it's because the soul that possesses Foxy died while he was running. But that's only a fan theory, it doesn't have much evidence supporting it. But this theory I have behind why he runs actually has evidence supporting it. In FNAF 2, to get rid of Withered Foxy, you have to flash your flashlight at him, which causes him to go away. So I think the reason Foxy hides behind Pirate's Cove and then runs down the hallway to attack you is so he can avoid light irritating him. Why does Foxy sing in FNAF 1? Well, the FNAF movie might actually have helped us figure out the answer. Now, as we all know, in FNAF 1, we can hear Foxy sing his very iconic song, but why does Foxy sing such a strange song? Well, I have a couple possible answers. Since Foxy is a pirate, pirates would sing sea shanties while they were bored and it would help them pass the time. Another possibility is that since Foxy is out of order, he might just have a broken voice box that goes off at random. But as I mentioned earlier, the FNAF movie also helped us show another reason why he sings. In one of the scenes where Foxy goes to attack Mike, he starts singing right before he attacks, which could signify his aggressiveness during the nights in FNAF 1. FNAF has a lot of fan theories, but this theory has to be the worst one ever. Now, I bet you're thinking of some very bad FNAF theories, like Foxy from FNAF 1 being a good guy, or that Freddy Fazbear caused the bite of 87 because of this handprint looking stain on his face. But what if I told you that there's actually a way worse one that you don't know about? In 2014, FNAF 1 was released and became one of the most popular horror indie video games ever, but FNAF 1 left us with way too many unsolved answers at the time, and well, the fans were making many theories, and one of those very bad theories was stemming from an animatronic standing in a certain area on camera, and that animatronic was Freddy. Many 
fans thought he was a girl because of him standing inside of the ladies' bathroom on the bathroom camera. What's the rarest Easter egg in FNAF? I bet right now you're thinking either Shadow Bonnie or the rare Game Over screens from FNAF 2. But what if I told you that it's actually Nico? If you're an OG FNAF fan, you probably think I'm gonna say something super obscure like Beacon Bonnie because it's technically only been seen once. But there's an Easter egg that you've probably never seen. Every year on this date, Scott Cawthon implemented this feature into the first three FNAF games that updates the three games to add hidden features on Halloween, such as a pumpkin in your office and Halloween lights. But after FNAF 4 came out, this Easter egg was easily forgotten because of the massive FNAF 4 Halloween update that overshadowed these updates. But the story doesn't end there. In FNAF World, Scott also decided to add another Halloween Easter egg slash update that was yet again still foreshadowed by the FNAF 4 update. But even almost 10 years later, most FNAF fans still don't know about this hidden Easter egg. Is FNAF dying? Well, the answer is complicated and isn't a simple yes or no answer. As most FNAF fans know, Scott Cawthon is no longer making FNAF games due to him getting canceled about his political beliefs and announced his retirement on June 16th, 2021. But what does that have to do with FNAF dying? Well, Scott Cawthon's last FNAF related project was the FNAF movie that just released. So the sad truth about this and the FNAF franchise as a whole is that Scott will never be able to fully tell his story and wrap up loose ends regarding FNAF mysteries. Due to his absence, quality control may go down, as we've seen in FNAF Security Breach, and it will eventually lead to the downfall spiral of mediocrity and unorganized storylines that will ruin the FNAF franchise as a whole, leading to its eventual downfall and therefore its slow death. And the reason William Afton specifically targeted Garrett is to get back at Mike's family, but more specifically, his mom, for not allowing him to see his son, Mike Schmidt. Which is why instead, he didn't go after Mike Schmidt, but instead, Garrett, because he isn't related to William. And the craziest part about this is that Vanessa seems to know this. The behavior she exhibits in the movie is very strange. She is very fixated on the Freddy Fazbear's restaurant, but also at the same time is very fixated on Mike and Abby. In literally one scene, Vanessa telling Mike that she will shoot him if he brings Abby back there. I don't know, but just to me, it didn't seem like she warned the other security guards about the dangers of being there, because they all seem to be dead now. So I mean, so maybe William Afton got remarried or something like that and had Vanessa. And then as Vanessa got older, William Afton told her what happened with the rest of her family. But if you want a part three for this theory, make sure to subscribe. Why is Foxy out of order in FNAF 1? Foxy is one of, if not the only animatronic to be shown out of order in the FNAF franchise. So why is he one of the only animatronics out of order in FNAF history? Well, there are many theories on why Foxy is out of order, but one theory sticks out way more compared to others on why he is out of order and actually would make a lot of sense. In FNAF 2, Phone Guy tells us that Foxy's endoskeleton was always kind of broken, which is why he's irritated by light in FNAF 2. So in my opinion, after fixing up the main animatronics, Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica, and also moving to the FNAF 1 location, it is possible that they just never bothered to fix Foxy because they didn't have the necessary funds to do so after purchasing a new location and fixing the other animatronics. Chica actually has a catchphrase? Well, kind of. Let me explain. In FNAF 1, we all know the main animatronics. Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, and Golden Freddy. And while playing FNAF 1, we can hear them make human-like sounds, like moaning, laughing, and singing. But none of them actually talk. So then how does Chica have a catchphrase? In 2014, FNAF 1 released, and became one of the most popular horror video games ever. So with its new popularity, many YouTubers started making videos about FNAF 1, and a couple weeks after FNAF 1 was released, a very popular YouTube video was released titled, How to Make FNAF Not Scary, made by Garrett Williamson. And this video became super popular because of how funny it was during the time. And it also created one of the first FNAF memes ever, which happened to be Chica's catchphrase, which is... <laughs> FNAF 3 actually has more than two spring traps? And no, I'm not talking about the FNAF AR variants, or even scrap trap or burn trap. Well, just let me explain. In FNAF 3, there are many animatronics, some including Watermelon Chica, Phantom Freddy, and of course, spring trap. But you might be asking, how is there multiple spring traps? Well, when FNAF 3 released, many players experienced a very strange glitch, where they would actually see spring trap on camera in different locations at once, when they had a ventilation error. But the craziest part about this is that it wasn't a glitch, and is actually still in the game to this day, and Scott confirmed why this is. So before I tell you, make sure to subscribe if you love FNAF. Scott confirmed, just like Phantom Animatronics, you could actually see more than one spring trap on camera when you have a ventilation error. And the reason why is because some of those are actually hallucinations. Why does Mango have a police scanner in FNAF 2? FNAF 2 has many animatronics, some of those including Toilet Bonnie, Toy Chica, and of course Mango. But Mango is hiding a dark secret that was hidden in plain sight from us. In FNAF 2, Mango was originally known as Funtime Foxy, proven to us by FNAF World, before she was originally destroyed and dissembled and is actually part of the toy animatronics. On one of the FNAF 2 phone calls, a phone guy mentions to us that the toy animatronics have facial recognition, advanced mobility, and most importantly, that they're all tied to a criminal database so they can detect a predator a mile away. So I believe all toy animatronics have this police scanner built inside of them. But since Mangle is destroyed and has many missing slash broken parts, that's a reason we can hear his police scanner. New game! Guess the FNAF sound. Again. I bet you won't be able to get the last one. But anyways, we'll start easy. What sound is this? It's the FNAF 4 Nightmare Jump Scare Sound. Now let's get harder. What sound is this? Shh. That was the FNAF Pizzeria Simulator Lefty Noise. Okay, the next one is really hard, so before I play it, make sure to subscribe if you love Five Nights at Freddy's. Here it is. 
Who is Shadow Freddy in FNAF? When you think of Shadow Freddy, you probably think of the Easter egg of him from FNAF 2. But Shadow Freddy isn't what you think he is, and the answer might shock you. In FNAF 3, we can get jump scared and attacked by the Phantom animatronics, which aren't real, and are in the night guard's mind due to hallucinations and or lack of air from the ventilation. But in FNAF 2, the Freddy mask had a cut toxicity feature that would kill the player from possible carbon dioxide poisoning. But what does that have to do with Shadow Freddy? Well, I think Scott was originally going to have Shadow Freddy show up as an effect of the toxicity meter from wearing the mask for too long. So I have two answers. One is that in FNAF 2, he has a hallucination, like the Phantom animatronics. Electronics. But in FNAF lore, he was actually originally real, shown to us by the FNAF 3 minigames, and was worn by William Afton. Balloon Boy is undoubtedly the most hated FNAF animatronic ever, but why? Well, I think I know why. Now, as if it wasn't obvious enough, we all know Balloon Boy. Even if you've never played FNAF, you probably still know him and hate his fat, little stupid face. But why? FNAF 2 was his first appearance, and with the franchise being at an all-time peak of popularity, FNAF was everywhere and you couldn't escape it, meaning you couldn't escape the stupid memes and videos about Balloon Boy. But that's not the main reason he is hated, but it's definitely why the hatred towards him spread. But the main reason why he is hated is because of his annoying presence. He just trolls the player by disabling their flashlight and laughing at them while never leaving the office until you eventually die. By the way, subscribe if you hate Balloon Boy. I was bored and I decided to see how long you can survive without moving in FNAF. Night 1 was the longest night I survived without moving, with me actually making it through the whole night without moving. But I can't say the same thing about Night 2. Night 2 was fairly the same until Foxy came out of nowhere around 1 minute and 15 seconds, which is a far cry compared to Night 1. But moving on to Night 3, Night 3 was yet again the same as Night 2 almost, with Foxy killing me right at the 1 minute mark. But was Night 4 any different? Yes it was actually. Night 4 was actually a lot better than Night 3, with me surviving way longer. Until yet again, Foxy killed me at 1 minute and 39 seconds. But Night 5 was crazy, because I actually survived the same time I did on Night 2, which was again around the 1 minute and 15 seconds mark for some reason. But we aren't done yet, Night 6 was actually my second best night with me surviving all the way to 1 minute and 50 seconds, but we still aren't done. Night 7, 420 mode. How long did I survive? Well, a whopping f as we all know, the first FNAF song made by the Living Tombstone was in the end credits for the first FNAF movie. But will the second song be in the next one? Well, it depends, so just let me explain. It's Been So Long is a song sung from the perspective of the mother of one of the children murdered by William Afton, mourning her child. But let's compare it to the first song. The first song is just an overall summary of the first FNAF game, and what it's about, and what you do during gameplay, and etc. And doesn't tell a story like how the FNAF 2 song does. So with that knowledge, this is what I think. Unless if the movie is about a mother mourning the loss of her child, the song will not be in the movie. What's the rarest jump scare in FNAF? Now you might be thinking Golden Freddy from FNAF 1 and FNAF 2, or even the Phantom Puppet, aka Watermelon Puppet from FNAF 3. But what if I told you that there is actually an even rarer jump scare than those? In Ultimate Custom Night, there is actually a rare easter egg where if you set Golden Freddy the 1 with no other animatronics active and purchase a death coin, you can actually use the death coin when Golden Freddy appears, which will cause Fredbear to jump scare you instead. But that actually isn't the rarest jump scare. Also in Ultimate Custom Night, DD's nuts can appear causing a random rare animatronic to spawn. Some of those including Plush Trap, Nightmare Chica, and Bonnet. And with how rare it is for Didi to show up, that means that these three jump scares are some of the rarest jump scares in FNAF. Why does FNAF 1 Freddy have a handprint on his face? When you think of Freddy Fazbear from FNAF 1, you probably think of his two terrifying jump scares, his creepy uh -huh. laugh, or how he is the creepiest animatronic in FNAF 1. But he's actually hiding a dark secret most FNAF fans don't know about. Way back in 2014, many FNAF fans noticed a handprint on Freddy's face, which sparked many rumors. One of those including that Freddy caused the bite of 87, which we all know isn't true now, but I I think I know the real reason the handprint is there. In the FNAF 1 Night 4 phone call, we can hear Phone Guy get jumped by all of the animatronics before he eventually dies. So I think that Phone Guy was fighting for his life, and in that struggle, he was trying to push Freddy away from him, which caused the handprint stain. 